Okay, so I'm gonna go over some of the critical details. I think a lot of people kind of struggled with this last week. So first off, uh, magnets are only to be used when tacking. You can tell that this one here that's nuked, pretty well fried, uh, probably was used the whole time. So that's almost a throwaway. So when you're getting your pieces together, a lot of people struggle trying to figure out how to do this edge joint. I saw any number of ways, use a magnet and then we fried them. So a couple students put it on the side, so it work really good. When you're starting the torch, one of the really big keys, starting and start stopping the torch, always lay it on its side, on the material. You see that? On its side. Then when you start the arc, you know where it is. If you come down like this, you're always going to hit before it starts. So start on its side, transition up, and then just keep it super close and just little circles like that. Boom, boom, just super close, not touching. On the edge joint, you don't need any extra filler because it's going to melt down just like so. It's going to fit in there nicely. The other joint... The next easiest joint would have been the lap joint. And on this lap joint, again, you always have to have them on this fixture. If they're not on this fixture, chance of success is really diminished. Again, lay the torch on its side, lift up, and then just super close, just like that. Boom, boom. This one you can use filler, but you don't necessarily have to. If you have to stop, lay it back on its side, start the torch, lift up, and away you go. Always super, super, super close. Probably the most complicated joint, one that a lot of people struggled with, was the T-joint. I don't even know if this magnet's even useful. Oh, there we go. Now the T-joint, it's important that you get a good view of that. Just how that's gonna work for you. So just a really good view. This needs to be facing towards you. This needs to be coming at you. You can see it's coming at me, but for your purposes, just like that, it needs to be coming at you. This filler rod then, you're gonna lay it down in the ditch, like so, and then just, again, super close. Remember to heat up this bottom one, but you can see just how close we are. Just very, very, very close. You gotta keep that very close, and then lay the filler rod in the ditch, and then just go straight at the filler rod, always forehand, always close, just like that. One of the things we didn't go over I'm gonna hit on now is first off when the torch is traveling the way that it's aiming we call that forehand I saw a lot of people going backhand the tick torch can only go forehand has to shield the gas as it goes forward so that's one of the another one of the big messes messes that we had to deal with just with the torch tipped up on one angle this is your electrode travel angle and in this case the travel beforehand so electrode forehand travel angle of about 45 degrees. So if you look at it, I'm tipping it up that just that one way, about 45 degrees. So forehand electro travel angle of about 45 degrees, just like so. When you come to do the second joint now, that's not enough. That is just not enough to come at this and go 45. You see how the gun's just not gonna get in there. It's aiming at the bottom plate only. So we need to tip this torch over on its side like that, just like so. And I'm gonna take the forehand traveling out of it so you can just see tipped over. And on this particular joint, this is gonna be electrode work angle measured off a of vertical, electrode work angle of about 45 degrees as well. So consequently, your torch comes in at two angles like this, just like so. It's got the forehand travel angle of 45 degrees and then the electrode, uh, work angle of 45 degrees in reference to the work there. So again, travel angle is just one angle. How steep or how shallow is that torch? Remember, TIG is forehand only. And then work angle is when you're throwing in that second angle there because you're trying to get that weld up on the wall work angle then is in reference to the work tipped over and again 45 degrees put the two of those together torch ends up looking like that so those were a lot of the problems again just really lay that torch on the deck start it get it going avoid hitting that contact should not be a, ha a problem so that was welding with filler 
this next week, we're gonna start into welding without filler. Aluminum, aluminum can be a little bit difficult, but for us, it'll be pretty simple. You're just gonna start the torch, again, lay it on its side, start the torch, and away you go. Well, you'll just melt this flange down, nice soft little circles, to get that flange to go over that top. Soft circles, get the flange over that top. So again, just start the arc, reach up, get it nice and hot, and just nice and smooth. You see how just really slow my hands are moving, both forward and my circles. Very just nice, smooth motion. I'm dragging my pinky on that fixture, finding some place I can keep myself out just at once with the table so that I don't bobble around like this. If you don't have something on the table, you're gonna be going like this, you're gonna be up in the air, or something's gonna be goofy. It's not gonna work for you. With TIG, whenever you're done, you always let go of the pedal first. The arc stops. Count to three or four, maybe five. You hear the gas is flowing. Technically, you wanna wait until the gas stops flowing. And when the gas stops flowing, then you can remove the torch. But you wanna stop the arc first with the torch still in place. Let that argon then cool that molten metal so it doesn't suck in any oxygen and away you go. So simple technique. The one change we've made here is I've taken these plates. This is 3000 series aluminum. And I've taken these plates and I've bent an edge up on one of them. Just one of them is all you need. Two of them will generate a hot spot with hot air and that hot air will come running up into your weld and make a mess. So just one spot. Just like so. We put this on there with a press brake. I'll be sitting down a chapter this week to illustrate that. And then this one's just cut with a hand shear. And I'll be showing you that as well. So just a couple live demos in the class. The rest should be pretty easy. So next week, TIG welding on aluminum. We'll see you then.